Now, every single time I remote start the car and I have the valves open from the previous night, I always regret it a little bit. It's just loud. I feel bad for my neighbors. Usually, I don't let my gas run out so late, but uh, I usually have more in the tank, but 42 miles left. It's almost at the red, so we'll see how much it costs to fill up. Based on like spirited driving, 50, 50 dollars, full tank, you get like 260 something miles. I don't know, if I'm driving conservatively, I think I could get maybe 300. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I just wanna quickly talk about some of my thoughts I had on the car as I'm approaching 10K miles. Um, currently, I have, what, 96, 39 miles on the odometer. I feel like it's been my daily car for the past uh, few months since I got in it. And, uh, yeah. Keep in mind, like, all my opinions and thoughts are all relative to, like, my personal experience and based off of the cars I previously owned. So, in this case, it will be the 430 F36 Grand Coupe. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse my voice. Just a little sick here. Anyway, yeah. If you guys, you know, don't care about all the details, honestly, in conclusion, it's just a 430. It feels like my old 430, but with a lot more power. <laughs> Sounds, I don't know, some people might get mad at that, but that's just my based on my personal experience so personally i haven't never really driven an f82 before the, pre the previous model m4 and from just people i've talked to on online anecdotes and like even like some other bmw people they all they say is like you know like you know the f82 is fun um you know well first of all it's a real world drive car so definitely a lot more fun than uh, you know, an X-Drive car. At least both my BMWs I've ever driven are X-Drive, so that's all I could talk about. Um, but yeah, like that car, you know, oh, I feel like if I've been getting like a sports car, I want some excitement with it. And the G82 just feels very, it's very polished is what is what I could say. Like it's very controlled. It's designed for people, I like to say the G82 compared to the F82 is designed for people who never never really driven. Um, it has a lower barrier of entry for uh, in terms of driving skill wise, especially the X-Drive version. More so the X-Drive version. This car is the X-Drive version, so I can only talk about this car. Um, in just normal daily driving, this car is so controlled and like handling everything is just I can't say anything bad about it. But also, like, if it wasn't for the power difference and the ability to turn off X-Drive with the click of a button, I would have mistaken it as a 430. That's how controlled and, like, confidence-inspiring it is. I don't... Saying that it's similar to a 430 isn't necessarily, like, you know, a bad thing in my opinion. It just, just goes to show how, like, easy it is to control. But then... All, while that is also a good thing, I, it's, I think it's also a double-edged sword in a, in a way. Because um, after a while, it definitely could get boring. Oh, that's I-8 right behind me. Alright, so, I'm from New York, we snow here quite often, and I'm really not trying to be the guy 
who gets stuck on you know a slight incline of a driveway which my driveway has a decently uh, large incline so that's why I got the X-Ride version and it's I, f I always at the, at the time purchase I thought like you know I'm not really missing out much if I get the X-Ride version since you know but like with a click of a button it could become real world drive so there it's like the best of both worlds mm, yeah but then I've realized that I probably drive the car in rear wheel drive 80% of the time. So much so that I map my M1 button to become rear wheel drive, sports plus, uh, traction control all the way off. And that's what makes this car fun. If it's on all wheel drive, yeah, you have great acceleration, but it's also just like boring though. Like you don't you don't get that kind of unpredictability that like keeps you on your toes. Like I don't, I don't know. I I feel like the F eighty two at least from what I've seen and stuff like it it's like the car's trying to kill you. But then there's also a part of like that unpredictability also makes it a little bit fun. I'm not sure if that makes me weird or anything, but you know being the like turning a corner and when you give it a little bit too much gas and it just the tail just slides out. That's what makes it a little fun as you try to correct it but you this car in all-wheel drive is completely controlled with everything like you know exactly what's gonna happen and I guess knowing exactly what's gonna happen makes it takes a takes a little bit away from the joy of driving um, honestly, the car handles amazingly and it has a lot of grip especially the all-wheel drive one like it'll grip and go but you feel all the power and all the torque, in my opinion, kicks in after like 3,500 RPM. Um, so you'll feel a lot of torque, and especially if you were to drive with traction control all the way off, maybe because I'm a bad driver, but I just, it's hard to, because when I'm trying to drive, I never, if I'm trying to drive fast, I rarely drive fast with traction control all the way off. It's because when the torque hits, it's so sudden and now it will make the rear kick out so like out of nowhere and that's the unpredictable fact factor about it if i'm just spiritually driving you know and i want to like do donuts and stuff like that's fun of course in an empty parking lot but when i'm trying to like you know swim or cut cut through traffic like that kind of unpredictability in my opinion is what is what's gonna make me you know wrap my car around a pole somewhere or find myself in a ditch could be just because you know, I'm a bad driver but it does it's not very confident and expire inspiring when the cart with that sudden torque kick in it's not very linear and keep in mind this is all because like you know my previous car only had like what 270 horsepower after a stage one tune so that car that didn't doesn't really have too much like you know sudden torque kick in it was just pretty linear it doesn't have too much power which, which kind of made me fun, cause made it kind of fun because you like kind of have to rev out the car. Uh, well, this car, revving out the car either makes the tail sideways if you're uh, if you're in traction controls all the way off, or it makes you, you go to, you end in, you end up in jail. Speaking of jail, it yeah, definitely got pulled over a few times. Nothing too crazy, but. It is what it is with this car. It comes with the territory. In terms of reliability with the car, uh, this car only had one issue so far in the few months I owned it. It was the trunk latch. Out of all things, the trunk latch failed. Um, like, you'll unlock it either with the key fob or within the car, and it will, like, won't fully release. It'll release a little bit and then relock. It. So, like, the trunk will be loose, but you can't, like, open it. Um, but, you know, the dealership covered it 100% all under warranty, so that's not an issue. Haven't experienced the issue since, so it could have completely been a, uh, a it could have completely just been a, a my car thing, or maybe, a, like, I don't know, I slammed the trunk down too hard or something, I don't know. daily driving 
I think this car is very nice. Of course, it's not like the most comfortable car, nor is it like the fastest car, but I think it's a very well-rounded car, well-rounded sports car for daily driving, as well as it has a lot of potential if you do want to push it. Mm, that being said, uh, there's definitely been times during my ownership where I'm like, oh, I guess I wouldn't mind selling it. Uh, especially after, um, I'm a big tech guy, so it's if and um, after Tesla Model S dropped the prices in September, ooh, Model S is cheaper than this car, MSRP, at like 89k. That definitely got me thinking, but yeah, ultimately, I guess I made my decision because this while this car is stock appearance wise and everything, uh, I just dropped like 10 grand on uh, parts carbon lights etc so it's coming in so i'm already committed to have staying with this car not that i don't want to sound like i'm you know regretting it because this car is a lot of fun um but you know people always wonder if grass is really greener on the other side but regardless sticking with this car for probably another year two years minimum i'm always asking myself whether or not i'm gonna probably you know tune the car or like do more power mods engine mods etc so far I'm probably thinking right now in my current mindset I think that the 500 ish horsepower that this car comes with is more than enough for me um, I'm not sure if I will need more horsepower but that's also but that's also what I said when I when I got my 430 over a 440 because I thought, you know, coming from my first car which is a Passat with like 100 something horsepower. Oh yeah, 250 is more than enough for me. Yeah. But then I missed I kind of regret it afterwards when everyone hopped on the B, on the B58 hype train. So now I have 500 horsepower and I'm starting to, you know, getting complacent. I'm like, yeah, this is more than enough for me. But then I'm trying to think to myself, will it really be though? I don't know maybe i'll tune it later down the line when you know you can unlock the ecu through like boot mode without need to send it over to femto but for now definitely want an exhaust because i don't know i feel like i got this car to be like rambunctious and obnoxious as i'm driving of course not to not in my neighborhood because i i respect my neighbors obviously um but maybe when, like, well, like when I'm driving down the highway, I want to hear some drama behind me. So maybe I might get a catback whole catback exhaust suite. That's what I'm thinking, and definitely an intake of some sort. That's one thing I kind of missed from um, one thing I kind of missed from my previous uh, F36. I installed the MSD intake system on that, and like you hear the turbo, the turbos like spool up, and as it like the blow off and everything and that sounded amazing and I've kind of missed that in this car um, I'm debating whether or not to get the MST version intakes or the really sexy inventory ones but from the online videos and stuff from what I'm seeing like the inventory ones you don't hear it as much so depends which one I like like something I hear a lot or something that looks really good when I open the M2 bay I don't know um, in terms of like actual like hardware mods other than cosmetics, those are only two I'm thinking as of now. Um, got a lot of cosmetic carbon changes later down the line. Definitely, those videos are going to be coming. Um, I think it's going to be like split up into various parts because I'm doing like front, sides, and rears, but we'll see when they arrive. So please, if you want to see this car have a experience, go through a carbon transformation, please like and subscribe so you don't miss the videos when it comes out. Uh, so yeah, uh, I don't want I don't want this video to be too rambling. So I think that's it for all my thoughts. N nothing else sticks out. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate that. If you guys like the video, please hit that like button. It means a lot to me. If you don't want to miss any of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button, and it really helps the channel out. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.